Okay, so this is part two of creating a 3D flying saucer using Animator. And at this point, we're going to take a look at four big tips on how to manipulate the Animator interface. It's a complex program if you don't know it, but once you learn these tricks, things get much, much easier. First trick is always max out the window that you're using on the screen. Don't just be content with it, just occupying a little bit of space. Make it as big as you possibly can so it's easier to see the buttons and see the objects. Next tip, memorize the F key on the keyboard. When you hit F, you will zoom into any and show any and all objects that are inside your 3D space. And sometimes objects are so small you can't see them. Hitting the F often reveals them. Another trick with that is clicking on an object and hitting Shift F zooms into the selected object. And you can hit F again to zoom back out. Next tip is with regard to the arc rotate tool. We've used it earlier, but now we're going to get a little more uh, precise with it. And there is a button up top that gets you into arc rotate, otherwise control R gets you into this mode with a green reticle around the outside. We already know the left mouse button lets you rotate and look around the object, but the right mouse button, when you click inside the reticle, lets you shift the object around or strafe back and forth. And that lets you position the screen or position your view anywhere that you want. And the last trick with this is the wheel mouse button. Pressing the wheel mouse button in and clicking inside this reticle allows you to zoom in or zoom back out. Now, here's one trick. You can't click outside that reticle and get the same results. So, for instance, if you're clicking outside with the left mouse button, you know, it starts to tilt it. Clicking with the right mouse button does nothing. The wheel mouse will still zoom in and out. There's another big trick and caveat of this thing. If you click and start moving something, but you move the mouse off the screen, it'll go back to where it started. It'll snap off and look like it rubber bands you to where you started. So make sure you move things in small increments, kind of scrub it across when you need to. And when you want to reset, remember on the numeric keypad on the right hand side of your keyboard, hit the 5 key to take the view back to something familiar like the front view. Control R, I'll turn off the, um, the arc rotate view. Our last uh, set of quick tips is going to be with regard to the quad view. Quad view is really handy for positioning things in 3D space. On your keyboard, at the bottom of the numeric keypad, on the very bottom right hand side is a period or delete key. I'll call it the delete key. When you tap it, it gives you quad view, four views, four panels in the same window. And each of these will act independently. So you could set this up, for instance, if you wanted to have a front view down here and a right view down here, you can do that. Now I'm hitting the numeric keypad to get these different views. Everything focuses around the front view, the five key. And if you want to see to the right hand side of the five key, hit the key just to the right hand side of the five key. The six gives you right. The 4 key would give you left, it's on the left side of the 5 key. Up top, the 5 key is going to be a top view, and down below, the 2 is going to give you a bottom. There's one more set of views that's kind of interesting. That's the 9 key, which gives you an orthographic view, and that is with no perspective or vanishing points. The 3 button will give you a per proper perspective view, and that means that objects that are further away from where your virtual eye is will appear smaller and give you a realistic uh, perspective of where your objects lie. To get out of the quad view, choose one of the views you want to remain with, hit the del key, the delete key one more time to turn off quad view and you're back where you started. And that's it for manipulating the interface. Hope those are helpful tips. On to the next tutorial.